All right, thank you very much, Melanie Mack. We are like 10 minutes away from the Xbox press conference to see if I'm right about this price thing. So a <laughs> lot, lot, lot at stake here over the next uh, couple of hours for me in terms of my reputation. They're currently like petitions online for Xbox to sue me. They're going to sue you, Q. <laughs> no, you're, you're buddies with Phil. It'll be fine. I don't know. I, I, haven't heard any, I haven't got any text from Phil, so I don't know what, what to expect. But anyways, it's time to set the stage for the Microsoft E3 briefing with our live at E3 roundtable presented by Totino's Pizza Rolls. I'd like to welcome Michelle Morrow, Angry Joe, Andrew Renee, and Kyle Bossman uh, to talk about all things Xbox. So this is like, this is a kind of a big deal. The brand new Xbox about to be unveiled. So yeah, let's start with the price. Um, you know, I think people, last year they announced they were doing this Project Scorpio. Everyone got excited about this kind of like brand new next generation system. Uh, and then broke the news this morning that I'm pretty sure it's going to be $4.99. And people online kind of like freaked out about that. Even though I did a poll on Twitter last week, I asked people what they, th what they thought the price was going to be. And 40% of the audience thought it was going to be $4.99. So what do you guys think? Is like, is $4.99 too much for this? What did the other 60% think? They, it was a split between like three ninety nine, five ninety nine, but it was uh, it won forty percent of the audience was like that's what they thought. So I mean, we haven't seen the games yet, we haven't heard the whole story. Yeah. But the gut reaction today was people were like, "This is way too much money." What do you guys think, Joe? Uh, well, to blow everybody's mind, it's got to be three ninety nine, yeah. in, in my opinion. But I, you know, it's a business, so I don't think they're going to do that. I think it's going to end up four forty nine. Okay. You go four ninety nine. I'm going to be like, hmm. I'm going to really need to see. Well, there is there's a conspiracy theory that like yeah. somehow I got floated the four ninety nine. So then when they announced ah. 499, people go. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> conspiracy <laughs> theory means <laughs> you knew that already. About that on I, I'm, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not going to be happy. If that's the case. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree out. with Joe. I think four forty nine sounds like a, a good base price, and yeah. then you know, like they did with the Xbox One S last year to bring it up, bigger hard drive, bigger price tag. Um, I think that would be smart for them. I think if they come in at $4.99, it's going to be hard for them to compete with PlayStation 4's install base. Right. I mean, if they really want to make it a competitive, like, price to sell, yep. they need to come in lower. And they can always have a better souped-up version right. at, like, True. 600 that True. has everything involved. Big hard drives, right. elite controller, all that type mm -hmm. of stuff. But, I mean, part of the thing that we don't really we don't know the whole story, because a big part of this Xbox press conference is all about the games. And I think, you know, the price, I'm sure they're not going to spend a lot of time talking about the price. Um, they're going to show games, and we think there's going to be over an hour and a half of new games. So let's talk about, you know, the games. First of all, I mean, what games are you guys excited to see? Because right now, Xbox, you know, we don't know a lot about what first-party games they have coming out in the Anthem. future. <laughs> Anthem. <laughs> Anthem. 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 I was disappointed when, you know, EA didn't kind of show. They teased it, and they said, yeah. Wait for tomorrow. It's like the okay, tomorrow. Of short Show me season. everything. Yeah. But they was, had my yeah. attention. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. True. Okay. So that's gonna be there. We know that's gonna be revealed. Yeah. We'll see the first um, gameplay of Anthem from Bioware. Just wondering if maybe Microsoft can can grab some exclusives there to make yeah. their conference a little more exciting. We'll okay. see. I don't know. What about like you know Anthem? Problem with that is I think it's gonna be on all systems. Right. We'll but what I'm saying but, is right. Uh, but so you know so what do they have? Do they have you know? Crackdown three. As far as exclusive. I'd love to see yeah. a live demo of Crackdown 3, like uh -huh. pure live, this is running right now. Right. That kind of thing. Nobody wants another CG trailer. I would hope by now. We haven't seen Crackdown in a few years, but that's yeah. going to be a big one. Lots of other, you know, questions around what other games you might see. The rumors, like, will we see Assassin's Creed there maybe mm. for the first time? Rumors that that might be tied to Xbox. But the big question I think a lot of people have is, how much better do the games need to be to get people to upgrade to this system. If it is $500, it's going to be, you know, double the price of an Xbox One S. So how much, you know, like, what are you looking for in terms of the, is it the graphics or the gameplay? Like, what's going to make, you know, we all have these systems now. We're pretty happy with them. So what's going to make you leap? They need to have a really strong AAA partner exclusive, like the PS4 had with Bloodborne and with Spider-Man, you know, that's forthcoming. Xbox doesn't really have that right now. I mean, they had Tomb Raider, but now it's, you know, multi-platform. Yep. Mm -hmm. So they really need that standout partner title because I think with for if we were talking about them going new IP for first party, yeah. it's probably not a big enough sell for new IP. I think if they got a partner title in an existing franchise, that could be a really big win for them. Yeah, so. with, without Halo 6 there, which I, I don't think it's going to be there. I think that's already been confirmed. They, they need something big. Yeah. Uh, last year they talked about, oh, we're, we, we're going to get exclusives. And then what ended up happening is 
they delayed a few games and they canceled one that I was really looking forward to, Scalebound. Scalebound. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so they need to make up for that, in my mind. They need to make up a little bit of ground and, and show off a really impressive exclusive, exclusive I title. I kind of wonder if they want to, you know, really lean into their whole home entertainment system because that's kind of been what Xbox has been pushing for a little while, right? Yep. So I'm kind of wondering with, you know, Mixer being a really big streaming thing going on and if it has the capacity of a computer, if it could run something like Steam and yep. have partnership there. So that would that would definitely, they would knock it out of the park, I think, if they were able to say we partnered here. Right. Yeah, and it's obviously, you know, they're tying it more into Windows, the Play Anywhere, so how does it tie into, you know, your library of games? Like part of their story is that all the games that you play, loved playing over the past year, they're going to look even better on Scorpio. So, you know, Battlefield 1 or mm -hmm. something going to look the best on Scorpio. Uh, I, but I think they can gain around a lot of ground with frame rate. Mm -hmm. if, I think that is going to be the biggest differentiator between the PS4 Pro right. and Scorpio is to say, look, those games that were 30 frames per second are 60 on our console. I think that's really the only sell you can make. I mean, right. but... That's not Xbox's audience, though, right? Like people that That's really PC. people that really yeah. care about high exactly. frame rate aren't buying the Xbox One, right? Like I think yeah. they're if you think about who their base is. I don't think they're splitting hairs whether it's 30 or 60 frames per second. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's just my we, experience. They, they're going to want to see community. a huge difference in graphics. You know yeah. what I yeah. mean? Like a clear difference. I saw side by side comparisons. I think it was Last Guardian with the PS4 Pro, right. and it was. It was all right, but not, you know, at the well, level where it's like, I'm going to run out. a lot of developers life. have right now is that, you know, with Scorpio, the games still work on Xbox One S because they're not going to let people make games exclusively for Scorpio. So it's for the first time that we're having this brand new console, which like, oh, by the way, all the games have to work yeah. on the previous system. So how much does that hold them back? Because they can't push the limits of Scorpio, which is going to be really interesting. So that's why I wonder, like, you know, you're asking for big price tag, like how much of a leap is there going to be there? And like, I, do you guys have 4K TVs now? No, 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 no. No, <laughs> uh, no I, I don't have a 4K. I don't so like I, it. I, I like it for sports and I like it for gaming. I, I do plan to get one specifically for gaming, but I don't think that everybody has that luxury. Yeah. And nor does everybody really enjoy 4K. Yeah. There's just not enough 4K content to yep. justify the price yeah. tag of the television. Well, we're, we're about to find <laughs> out. We're going to head down to the Galen Center. But before we head to the briefing, I want to thank our sponsor, Totino's Pizza Rolls, who've been taking care of gamers for years, giving away Xbox One consoles and in-game content for games like Gears of War 4 and Mass Effect. And uh, they're not done with giveaways. Uh, that's all we can say for now. But stay tuned uh, throughout the show because you'll find out more about how they're working with the team at Xbox and other exclusive gaming content. Uh, you won't want to miss it. But down at the Galen Center right now, Phil Spencer will be on stage. Uh, they announced yesterday that the press conference is going to go longer than 90 minutes. It's going to be... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be okay. close to two hours of that stuff. So let's loaded. head in now to the Galen Center <laughs> and check out Xbox. Enjoy the show. People are hyped. I guess they felt true power. Hey, everyone, it's Jeff Keeley. We are back here on YouTube Live at E3, and I'm joined by... Uh, Bernie Burns, Michelle Morrow, Angry Joe, and Andrew Renee. That was the Xbox One X press conference. Keely redeemed. Yeah. <laughs> 499. Yeah. yeah. 499. yeah. They, they slipped that in there very subtly. Um, but yeah, let's get some gut reactions. So uh, 499, based on what you saw there, Bernie, is uh, are you replacing your Xbox with this? I mean, I'll always upgrade. I mean, Xbox is the platform that I tend to gravitate towards on console anyway. So definitely. I was pretty excited by the name because I heard some horrible rumors of what it could be named. And I love the fact that it's Xbox One X because they've avoided the whole X-Bone problem. Yes. Now the acronym for Xbox One X is Xbox, which is great. They brought the marketing all back around full circle. Isn't, isn't that XOX? You're including the B. I'll give them the benefit. <laughs> XOX. Xbox. Say, okay. I kind of like... People are hyped. I guess they felt true power. Hey, everyone, it's Jeff Keeley. We are back here on YouTube Live at E3, and I'm joined by uh, Bernie Burns, Michelle Morrow, Angry Joe, and Andrew Renee. That was the Xbox One X press conference. Keeley redeemed. 
499. Yeah. yeah. 499. yeah. They, they, they slipped that in there very subtly. Um, but yeah, let's get some gut reactions. So uh, 499, based on what you saw there, Bernie, is uh, are you replacing your Xbox with this? I mean, I'll always upgrade. I mean, Xbox is the platform that I tend to gravitate towards on console anyway. So definitely, I was pretty excited by the name because I heard some horrible rumors of what it could be named. And I love the fact that it's Xbox One X because they've avoided the whole X-Bone problem. Yes. Now the acronym for Xbox One X is Xbox, which is great. They brought the marketing all back around full circle. Isn't isn't that X O X? Are you the you the benefit of the X O X? Xbox. Say. Okay. I kind of like Scorpio. I, I'm gonna be honest. I kind of felt a little Scorpio. sad. It has so I was much like, momentum that name around was that so Scorpio cool. Name. Yeah. Yeah, because everyone was talking about Project Scorpio, and now. Yeah, just... but like those those names, like the only other one I can think of that was publicly said was when Kinect was called Natal, yeah. and they moved away from that That's to true. something. Yeah. But yeah, Xbox One S. This is Xbox One X. So it's and it's double the price of an Xbox One S. So based on what you guys saw, do you think it's double the value there? What you're getting, Michelle? I mean, I, I'm with Bernie in that I will always upgrade. Um, I think you still get the value in it. I mean, I think that there's still more to be uh, learned too about Mixer yep. um, and the capabilities in there. So I do believe that. Yeah, I mean, I think it's worth the price. All right, I Joe. Mean, really? Yeah, Joe's shaking his head. <laughs> Yeah, not a lot of people Joe, have Joe, that Joe, kind Joe. of disposable <laughs> income. Right. Yeah. That's true. And and they may already have an Xbox One. Uh, a lot of my friends already upgraded to the Xbox One S. Mm -hmm. and so from what I saw there, there wasn't a whole, you know a whole lot to convince me to just run out and get it right when it releases. They need to back it up a lot more. I kept looking for which ones had the Xbox One X. Uh, enhancement and, and trying to see if it was better looking than, than previous versions. Uh, and what I saw there didn't really convince me. Maybe right. in the future they can show more, but and it looked at like that well, price it felt like, you know, Lucky's Tale, Crackdown. Mm -hmm. I guess Forza will be out by then or they'll have an enhanced mm -hmm. version for Oh, action, Forza looks great. For, those first wow. two assets, when you look at Forza and yeah. uh, Metro, I was like, wow, it's blown yeah. away. Yeah, and then, like, uh, that's yeah. where my hype oh, was yeah. here. Yeah. And then, you know, over time, I think that... Uh, what do you think, I AR? Dissipated. I think you have to have a 4K TV to make this make sense yeah. for you as a purchase. Sure. And if you don't have a 4K TV, then think about... that more than doubles the cost of this purchase, right? Yep. Yeah. And so I think that it's a it's a really expensive toy. Like I've people ask me, do I need a PS4 Pro? And I say, no, you don't need a PS4 Pro. A, a PS4 does just as good of a job right. as the PS4 Pro. And I think it's the exact same thing here. Is it do do these assets look beautiful? I mean like I was drooling during that Metro trip. Yeah. Yeah. It was gorgeous. Yeah. But like is that necessary for a, the gaming experience on Xbox right now? Right. Definitely not. Well, and we're going to see a lot of those game developers coming by, and then Major Nelson will be here uh, with Carl from the Xbox Design Lab. We're going to have the first unboxing of the One X, because they didn't ever show the actual console on stage. Mm -hmm. And sure. basically what they're saying, it's smaller right. than the Xbox yeah. One the S. Smaller That's super console. impressive, yeah. I will yeah. say, that it's smaller is amazing, especially when you think about how large the original box was when yeah. it debuted it, you know, so many right. years ago now. And like th That they've made it sleeker and smaller is... I was, love that. Was it just my eyes, or was it like a, a, a black green or a very yeah. dark green? I, I know the LED right was green, like a dark greenish. Yeah. Uh, but is, like it, is it jet black or is it greenish <laughs> black? We'll find Military out soon black. enough. It'll be here. All right, well, we're going to keep talking, but right now we're going to head over to uh, Melanie Mac to give some reactions from you guys uh, using the hashtag YouTube E3. Mel? Hey, thank you, Jeff. I had so much fun watching the press conference with all of you guys on YouTube, and I saw those super chats. Don't think I didn't see those. And if you're watching right now on YouTube and you want to leave a super chat, check that out on your web browser and also on Android. But right now, I've got the exclusive on some social media all about the press conference. So it kind of has some mixed reviews. Some people were a little disappointed. A lot of people were really excited, though. They announced so many games, and some of the more notable ones were Assassin's Creed Origins. I'm a big Assassin's Creed fan, so I'm about this. Egypt is just like the best setting, so it's gonna be amazing. And Cuphead release date, which is funny because I know a lot of my friends personally, they've been tweeting about it, it's like their most anticipated game, so September 29th, the hype is real. And then finally, my favorite thing was Life is Strange, the sequel, before the storm. So a lot of you know I'm a huge fan of Life is Strange. I streamed it, it was a feels trip. And there were so many questions though, like what happened before all this? What's up with Rachel? We're gonna find out, so I'm so excited. So super great stuff going on here. And then also the Xbox One X price point. Jeff, you spoiled it. 
You you no. bad promo guy. <laughs> What's up with that? I spoiled uh, it. Yeah, I was. Uh, but can you spoil the price? Well, and it's also like when you actually think about it, I, for what the technology that's in there, it's not like a terrible price. It's just a question of like how much differentiation will there right. be in yeah. games? Do you have a 4K TV? It's sort of like that's why I think Sony did a good job with PS4 to PS4 Pro. It was like sort of a premium edition, which you could get, but it didn't sort of displace PS4. True. The problem was Project Scorpio. I think it was sold last year as this true next generation. Yes. Release, so people were expecting this whole start. But look, every game you saw there, it's the first time ever that every game you saw there is still going to work on your Xbox One S. So it's it sort of holds getting you back a little bit because, like, yeah. Anthem or Metro or Forza, they're going to work on your regular Xbox already. And But, you know, we'll see what developers do, like, two or three years from now because developers will eventually drive that. But even talking about, like, the size of it, the way we talk about this thing is I was hoping to talk about a new console. And yeah. I feel like the way we talk about it is right. just it's a revision of the current Xbox And it looks one. the same almost, right? Yeah. It's not pretty, it's smaller. It's fine. It's smaller, but it's <laughs> not, like, some crazy new radical design. But it does feel like more of an answer to the yeah. PS Pro now than it does the, right. against this the way we were sold leap. it last year. Yeah. Exactly. This yeah. leaps forward. And I agree. So, you know, out of all those games that you guys saw today, it was interesting. That I thought at the beginning... Forza and Metro looked really good. Were there other games that stood out to you guys? Anthem looked really strong at the end. I mean, Assassin's yeah. Creed, of course. Assassin's Creed looks great. <laughs> it looks fantastic. Beyond all systems. The thing, as you said, is like, which are the truly exclusive first-party games? And really, all we saw, we saw Crackdown, we saw Sea of Thieves, you know, State of Decay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, Ori. The ones that we Ori knew about already. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Oh, oh, and yeah. the Darwin Project, too. Was it that that exclusive? Uh, that's a good that's question. I don't know. Well. They're going to be on coming. PC as well? Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like, I mean, almost all the Xbox games, I feel like, come to PC now, but they, you know, exactly. It's out of all those titles. Let's talk about some of them. Crackdown. Joe, what do you think of Crackdown? Uh, Waited a few years. To well, I hate to be negative again, but I, I saw, I was waiting to see lots of city destruction. Mm -hmm. They talked about how much, you know, horsepower they can get out of the servers. You know, they did all those upgrades yeah. to the Xbox Live service. And for some reason, if you notice real close, I didn't see really any building get blown up. Uh, right. In fact, like, look, 12 rockets hit an overpass. That was the big and idea. The overpass didn't break. Right? Right. All the clouds. So I was really surprised physics. with a lack of destruction. Is that still yeah. a major feature in the game? If it's not, they need to tell us. They'll yeah. be here on set, Joe. Okay. Well, well you you need to ask. <laughs> Grill them. All the developers. Where did the guy. destruction go? But Terry Crews uh, did have Terry Crews. Yeah, oh Terry my God! Is. I love it. Terry Crews is my friend. They just need to make him the actual main character of the game. <laughs> I want to play that game with him. He he seems like a good time. As a voice, no live action. Yeah. Please. That gets I, th I think Terry. I think he is the voice of the main character, isn't he? Yeah. As long as we're yeah. not the live action segment. Yeah. Like live, that, I, that, yeah. Leave what, it for that marketing. Awesome. But leave it for marketing. <laughs> leave it for marketing. <laughs> I played enough of those games in the '90s on CD-ROM. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So anything else that stood out to you guys? You know, lots of indie games. We saw Cuphead. Uh, Finally has a release Ashton. date. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, coming in September. I love State yeah, of the right? Decay. And State yeah. of the Decay was a great game. But even as someone who really loved the game, the first one felt unfinished. Yeah. Even when they did the remastered Survival Edition. So I think State of the Decay 2 is going to be a tremendous yeah. game. And I also loved Shadow of Mordor. I didn't yeah. know oh that I God, wanted yeah, yeah. revenge in a game. Like yeah. they gamified the feeling of revenge. Yes. It seems like now they're just taking that to the next level. I'm super incredible. excited about Shadow. Yeah, they did a really, like, that game looks incredible. Michael the Plater will be here with us. Oh, so, my God. The big thing I think that everyone is looking at this is, is saying it's going to be great for Xbox owners to potentially upgrade, but was there anything you saw there that you think is going to get, like, the PlayStation fan base to say, like, you know, I'm leaving PlayStation behind, I'm moving to Xbox, because they are now going to have, you know, what they keep saying, the most powerful console out there, so it's more powerful than a PS4 Pro. Is there anything there you see that makes you think the PlayStation fans are going to move over? I mean, no. Like, that was the really kind of disappointing right. part of this conference. We saw some really great demos, including that really lengthy Sea of Thieves demo and things like that, yeah. but in the new MMO that they announced mm -hmm. as well. But I think that they didn't come with, like, the really over-the-top experiences that's going to make people jump to a different console. Right. Yeah. You know, and that was kind of a bummer. Especially with all the hype. I mean, yeah. there's such hype around Scorpio and with this yeah. coming out that I think we felt... Like, m maybe it got overhyped in a way that, that yeah, we expected way more than, yeah. than what they were actually And the experience, giving. too, to me, it's like, you know, Xbox Live. I mean, they talked a little bit about Mixer, but it's sort of like, yeah, how is the sort of, you yeah. know, the, the hardware going to allow you to do really interesting things like switching between games on the fly or anything like that? And yeah. we didn't get, maybe there is some of that stuff, but we didn't get a lot of that. But listen, you can have, you know, sextillion, quadrillion, gigaflop, teraflops. <laughs> it, it doesn't matter if yeah. you don't have the games that, you know, can take advantage of that or support. Supported, and I just didn't see enough of that. It seemed like yeah. slightly upgraded games from yeah. the Xbox right. One, uh, you know, right. S uh, into the X, and maybe 
a year down along yeah. the line or something when the developers have a lot more time, we'll yeah. start to see something that, that looks even uh, better. And All right, so let's off. get some grades. Go down uh, a, a to F scale. What would you grade this press conference? I mean, I would give this one, I would give this one a solid B minus, I would say. I'd say this is one of the rougher ones in the last few years for Xbox, just because I think re announcing it first last year, they just set up too much right. speculation for a year and too much hype, and I think people were hoping for a little bit more. Yeah, I agree with that. Michelle? Yeah. I, I'd give them a solid C. It was average. Um, you know, I think they had a lot of potential, and they just didn't hit it in the way that I know that I wanted to see it. So, right. um, Joe, still cool. This is going to be tough for me, Angry Joe. Uh, <laughs> uh, ooh, uh, I really wanted Microsoft to win this yeah. this one and yeah, uh, and put did. Sony on notice because Sony, I, I feel, has kind of been killing it, uh, at least the last year and, and previous year. Mm. Well, I normally scale out of 10, but if I was on that grade, I'd have to go with, with, with a C as well. C? Okay. Yeah, probably C. On minus. the Angry Joe scale, it's what, a 6 uh, or 7? Or yeah, we... Angry Joe scale would be about a 6. Don't want to spoil your Maybe video. Even a... <laughs> <laughs> well, I, what did I, you give the look? What did you give the yesterday? It was like a 5 Here, or 6? Here's the problem, Jeff, is yeah. that the branding was all off. Like, yeah. I couldn't see which one was exclusive to the actual console and which one is, was exclusive to the enhancements of the X and which yeah. one is also on computer. And, and so that got real muddy, that message. Yeah. And so I actually have to go back and watch it again yeah. to see where the impact was. There's a lot of messaging there, you're yeah, right, yeah. with like lower thirds and everything. I mean, right. Anthem looked great, though. Yeah, it did. <laughs> it looked good. Yeah. John Warner will be here with us to tell us more about that one. Andrea Renee? Yeah, I think I'm probably gonna split the difference here. I would love to give them a B, but they just didn't bring the kind of experiences that Xbox is known for. Yep. I think it's amazing that they are expanding their indie uh, development scene and really bringing ID at Xbox forward. But I mean, I think I'm gonna have to go C plus. The messaging was was all over the place. The price points Still too Spencer high. Letting you down. They didn't even give a Halo <laughs> teaser. I know they. I was gonna say I was gonna, gonna, I'm gonna have to ask them when they come not by because like they. Not even a 30 second <laughs> teaser. Nothing. They teased that they were gonna have some kind of Halo news, not like Halo Six here. That I didn't. It was the interesting. Nothing. They didn't mention Halo or Gears yeah. at all in the press conference. One of those things that made it feel like it wasn't another generation yep. of consoles because yep. those are the yeah. titles you expect to see something related yeah. to a new generation of consoles. Truth. Great point, it, they, they lack the heavy hitters of the exclusives. You know what I'm yeah. saying? We knew about some, the ones that they showed off, you know, a State of Decay and Crackdown 3 and, and various ones. And then the ones that they did show off that were super impressive, like Anthem, uh, are, are cross or are, are multi-platform. So. Yep. That's right. You're going to play it on everything. Which yeah. Is, uh, looks good. All right. Well, thank you so much, guys, for hanging with us. You guys had to forgo being there in person to be with us in the studio. We really appreciate it. So uh, thanks, Bernie, Michelle, Joe, and Andrea. We're going to yeah. head on over here because now we've got to get to some games and some demos. And joining us right now with an exclusive first look at Fortnite is creative director Darren Sugg. Darren, good to see you, man. How's everything? Awesome. Great to have you on. So uh, Fortnite, you guys just re-revealed.